Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 7 on Climate Science. This is video number 12 and a continuation in our look at recent climate variation, this time focusing on Aboriginal art. So the same sort of learning intention that we've talked about before and we're trying to accumulate some identification and explanation for some changes in recent climate variations that may be linked to Aboriginal art sites showing now extinct species and changes in environment. So there's a lot of examples of ancient art or ancient cave paintings. And we know that many different early human societies left paintings or carvings of the animals that they hunted, or at least some of the animals that they found in their local area. Probably one of the most famous uh, sets of cave paintings are at Lascaux in France. But there's also examples in Africa and here in Australia. So we know that early humans recorded their local animals from rock art. And so any changes in the climate that may have occurred since those original paintings were created could be implied in terms of what sort of animals may be present in an area today. One of the examples that we can see of this is a study of the Sahara Desert. Now, the Sahara is the world's largest desert and it contains rock drawings of animals that are only found today much further to the south. So this indicates that the Sahara Desert wasn't always a desert. When we look at Australia, we can see cave paintings that can date back to somewhere around 50,000 years ago. And this predates Lascaux by a about 20,000 years. So it's providing us a very good long history of human habitation on the Australian continent. In a lot of areas around tropics, savanna grasslands in the northern part of Australia, we see some cave paintings that depict some of the megafaunal animals that have been long extinct, some as long as 30,000 years ago. These include the giant diprotodon, the marsupial lion, Thalico leo, and some of the giant flightless birds like Genyornis. But we also see uh, diagrams or pictures like the one that you see on the slide here of the thylacine. Now, the thylacine is the Tasmanian tiger. We know the Tasmanian tiger was still in Tasmania until around the, the 1920s, 1930s in some of the zoos. But they've now, we, as, as much as we can tell, are extinct. But they were present on the mainland of Australia. And in fact, they are an indicator of a change in the climate in terms of the fact that they couldn't have been in some of the areas that we see existing now because the climate doesn't suit the type of environment that they would have preferred uh, had they still been living there. And this is one of the reasons why if we tie the thylacines to a more um, well-forested region, not a savanna grassland, not an area that's um, lower in rainfall, it needs to be a higher rainfall area in order for these animals to be able to hunt. We know that they were apex predators um, when they were still um, found in the native environment, um, particularly in Tasmania, as recently as about 100 years ago but we know that they've been gone from the mainland for some period of time. So this is suggesting something about the more recent climates. So what we're trying again to do is look at identifying and then explaining how some of these pieces of data, some of these areas can be indicators of what might be going on. So we, we could conclude I, from um, paintings or drawings of um, thylacines in the northern part of Australia that they may have um, been drawn by people who had come down south, maybe some way crossed over uh, and seen some of these in Tasmania and then crossed back over Bass Strait, gone back up to northern Australia and drew these from memory. But we think that that's probably unlikely. It's more likely that these were representatives of organisms that the humans were actually coexisting with at the same time. So if we find some of these cave drawings, then what we're suggesting is that these are the sorts of organisms that were found in that local area. And by extension, therefore, we get some idea by making comparisons with uh, either the same or similar organisms that live today, or by looking at some other aspects of the paleoecology, that we can make some conclusions about the type of environment. And because we know that there's a strong link between climate and vegetation in particular, 
and therefore into a broader issue around ecology. We can draw these distinctions by discussing each of these and having a look at what evidence is presented in the case of the people who lived a long time ago. So Aboriginal art is another very important area of recent evidence of climate variations and it's recorded on the walls for us to read. Thanks for watching.